Hi there, my name is Jeff Sackman. I'm a GMAT tutor and author. I run a website called GMATHacks.com and I've written a GMAT math book called Total GMAT Math, which covers all the content you need to know for the GMAT math section. And one thing you're probably aware of if you're studying for the GMAT is that you don't get to use a calculator on the GMAT. The GMAT doesn't give you a ton of huge complicated numbers, so you'll never have to divide 5.739 by 1.226, but you will have to do some math that you normally do with a calculator. So what's helpful to learn are some tactics to do some simple math operations in your head without having to go to long division or complicated on paper multiplication. There are a lot of different strategies out there. Some are easier than others. Some take more time than others. But there are a few that are among my favorites. A couple of them I want to show you right now, which are dividing by 5 and multiplying by 5. Sometimes dividing by 5 and multiplying by 5 is pretty easy, especially if you're dealing with small numbers. So if you want to divide 100 by 5, you probably know that's 20. If you want to divide 500 by 5, you can figure out pretty quickly that that's 100. But let's take a more complicated example. Let's say you've got 385 and you want to divide it by 5. Now, you might know that off the top of your head. If you do, congratulations. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. So what I'm going to show you is how I would go about coming up with 385 divided by 5 without doing much on paper hopefully every step in my head, except for maybe one just reminder to myself. So what I'm going to do is recognize that when you're dividing by five, you're multiplying by one-fifth. And one-fifth is the same as two over ten. Twos and tens are some of the easiest numbers in the world to multiply and divide by. So instead of dividing by five, I'm going to divide by ten and multiply by 2. So instead of the one difficult step of dividing by 5, I'm going to do two easier steps. One of the steps is dividing by 10, one of the steps is multiplying by 2. So first step, 385 divided by 10, doesn't get much easier than dividing by 10, that becomes 38.5. Then we multiply by 2, 38.5 times 2, that might take a second in your head. It does for me. It works out to 77. So it's two steps instead of one step, but both of those steps are pretty easy. There might have just been one little lull as you figure out 38.5 times 2. And if you have to multiply that, you're really no worse off than you were in the first place. So instead of dividing by 5, we're multiplying by 2 and dividing by 10. And we're really just replacing this fraction, 1 over 5, by an equivalent fraction, 2 over 10. The same strategy, in essence, is how we quickly multiply by 5. So when we're multiplying by 5, we're taking a number, let's say hmm, 67. Again, that isn't something I could do in my head. It might take a minute to work it out on paper. So I'm going to replace that 5 by 10 over 2. Again. Multiplying by 10, that's as easy as it gets. Dividing by 2 might take another second or two, but probably faster than multiplying by 5 in the first place. So that first step, 67 times 10, 670. We're just adding a 0, automatic as it can be. Then we're doing 670 divided by 2. If you want to break it down the way I would do it in my head, we take 600 divided by 2, that's 300. 70 divided by 2 is 35, so we're at 335. We've turned it into two or three steps as opposed to one again, but those steps are very simple. So the whole process is replacing the 5 with a 10 and a 2. When we're multiplying, multiplying by 5 is the same as multiplying by 10 over 2. When we're dividing, 1 fifth is the same as 2 over 10. Very straightforward. We're not bending any of the rules of mathematics. We're just trying to make your life a little easier as you're working through some difficult problems on the GMAT.